Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to be talking about adrenal corticotropic hormones. So let's jump right into this. And basically, let's look at the word adrenal corticotropic. So adrenal means it pertains to the adrenal gland, which we'll be talking about in just a few minutes. Cortical means it's in the cortex, which is the outer part of the adrenal gland. And tropic means this hormone is going to cause the release of another hormone. So instead of saying adrenal corticotropic hormone all the time, we're just gonna abbreviate this as ACTA. So let's go ahead and look at what it does. And basically, this is going to be released in response to long-term stress. Okay, it's released in response to long-term stress. So let's take a look at what's gonna happen here. This is the brain on someone who is looking that way. So you're looking at it from the side like this, okay? This is the cerebellum. This is gonna be the brainstem. This big part, if you recall, is called the cerebrum. Now, inside the brain, we actually have a big portion called the hypothalamus. All right, and so here's what's going to happen. Let's say there's some type of stress. The stress is going to travel up to the brainstem or it's gonna come from the limbic system and it's going to stimulate receptors that are on this hypothalamus. So here's my receptor on the hypothalamus and this is going to come over and stimulate this, okay? so. When this becomes stimulated, what it's going to do is it's going to send signals, and it's gonna send signals to a nucleus that's inside of here. And this nucleus is gonna be called the paraventricular nucleus. Okay, and remember, a nucleus is just a group of cell bodies. So there's the paraventricular nucleus. Now when the paraventricular nucleus becomes activated, what it's going to do is it's going to release a hormone that we are going to call corticotropin releasing hormone. So it's gonna be called corticotropin releasing hormone. But this is more commonly known as CRH. So now this corticotropin releasing hormone is gonna come down and down in here I have the pituitary gland. So there's the infundibulum. I'm gonna draw my anterior pituitary really big. I'm gonna draw my posterior pituitary kind of small. And this is going to travel through something called the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system down into this anterior pituitary gland. All right, so just to clarify, this is my anterior pituitary. Okay. And here comes my corticotropin releasing hormone. Now on this cell right here, we are going to have another receptor. Okay, and I'm gonna draw it like this, but this is actually a seven transmembrane receptor. I'm not gonna go through all the steps. I'm not gonna write them all down, but for the most part, this is going to come down to CRH. It's gonna hit this receptor here on this cell. What it's going to do is it's going to activate what we call a G-stimulatory protein, which is then gonna activate adrenalate cyclase, which is then going to cause ATP to become cyclic AMP, and the cyclic AMP is going to activate protein kinase A, which is gonna do phosphorylation, and we are going to end up with our hormone called ACTH being released. Before we go on, there's just one more thing I wanna say. This cell right here, we're gonna call a corticotroph. Okay, so this is called a corticotroph. So corticotroph cells are going to release ACTH. So what happens next now? My ACTH is going to enter in the bloodstream and it's going to go up here to the adrenal glands. So if we look real quick at these, these are my kidneys, right? So my adrenal gland is going to sit on top of my kidneys. So these are the adrenal glands here, you have two of them, one on top of each kidney. Okay, so there's my two adrenal glands right there. So we're gonna take this now, we're gonna look at the adrenal glands. So I'm just gonna move this over to here real quick. And this is my adrenal gland here. So before we get started, what I wanna look at is we said that ACTH is released in response to long-term stress. Let's look at short-term stress real quick. So I have the middle part here and we're gonna call this the adrenal medulla. All right, and the adrenal medulla is in the middle. So the adrenal medulla is gonna be responsible for short-term stress. 
also known as fight or flight. Okay, and this is going to release hormones that fall under the category of catecholamines. And the main hormones it's going to release is epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Okay, now, ACTH doesn't have anything really to do with these, but because it's there, I put it in there. This is going to be controlled by the nervous system. Okay, so these are gonna be controlled by the nervous system. Let's look at this outer part here. So the outer part of this is going to be called my adrenal cortex. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cutaway here of this section right here of my adrenal cortex. So let's take a look at this over here. I'm gonna draw it like this. And we're gonna have a few different zones here. So let's take a look at this first zone here. And I'm gonna have cells there. Okay, and that would be up in this section here. Now, again, this is a cutaway. This would be going around the whole way around this, okay? This part here is gonna be called the zona glomerulosa. Okay, it's gonna be responsible for the regulation of water and minerals in blood, okay? So the hormones it releases fall in the, under a category called mineral corticoids. And the main one that's released is aldosterone. Okay, so that's gonna be this section that's up in here. Now after this section, we are going to have another layer, and this one, the cells are going to be in a cord-like structure. All right, and they're gonna come down to here. So I'm gonna do it right in here like this. And this one, this is the biggest section. And this section we're gonna call the zona fasciculata. Okay, the zona fasciculata. So this is going to be responsible for metabolism. What it's going to do is it's going to metabolize it's going to metabolize glucose so that our muscles have enough glucose to fight off any stress. This is going to release a, a category of hormones that we call glucocorticoids. Okay, it's going to release glucocorticoids and it's going to release cortisol. It's going to release cortisone, and it's going to release corticosterone. All right, and then some of this will actually be released down into the next section. So we're going to call this last section here. Let's go with purple. This section in here, we're going to call the. This is in a net-like structure, by the way, and we're gonna call this the zona reticularis, okay? This is gonna be responsible for making sex hormones. Um, for the most part, does testosterone more than the female sex hormones? Uh, sometimes people even say that this one is, is basically gonna stimulate masculinity, but anyways, it's gonna be responsible for sex hormones, okay? And the main one it's going to release is something that we call dehydroepiandosterone. Okay. And so basically this is better known as DHEA. Okay. So that's it for ACTH. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe button, and we will catch you next time.